We start off today's news with a report from Ventures Africa that Microsoft, through the Microsoft for Africa initiative, has launched an intellectual property hub. The hub will help local developers and independent software vendors in Africa by equipping them with the tools to develop, protect and monetize their innovations. Microsoft also shared that in addition to monetizing innovations and ideas, developers can connect with the right investors for their products. The Intellectual Property Hub will start off in Kenya, Kenya again, and run in that country for two years before heading off to other African countries. The entire process, we're told, will be managed by the local government, who will streamline and digitize the process of IP registration and educate young innovators on the importance of having IP protection. Africa has a notoriously low rate of registration for intellectual property. The World Intellectual Property Organization has stated that between 2009 and 2012, Egypt, South Africa, Kenya and Ivory Coast registered 683, 608, 383 and 53 patent applications respectively. This is a sharp contrast to a nation like the United States with 268,000 registrations within the same period. It is hoped that with the establishment of this new hub and the subsequent increase in information and tools available, we will see more advances in our approach to intellectual property and, of course, a corresponding increase in African-initiated patents and ideas. Akim Bello, author of the play Egbon of Lagos, has been announced winner of the Wale Shoinka Prize for Literature. The winning entry was selected by a shortlist of three finalists at an event graced by some of the luminaries in the literary world. The winner of the award is a celebrated author and former chairman of the Oyo State branch of the Association of Nigerian Authors. He is currently an executive director of a non-governmental organization in Ibadan, Nigeria. Mr. Bello received his award from Professor Wale Shoinka in the presence of representatives of the Lumina Foundation, distinguished guests and sponsors. Health news from This Day Live with a report that Ghana has opened a state-of-the-art cancer diagnostic and treatment center. The center is said to be equal in standard to facilities everywhere else in the world and will be expected to cater for patients from the West African sub-region. The center is the product of a Ghanaian-Swedish collaboration with medical investors Elekta and Swit Fund as part owners. Chief Executive Officer of the Center, Joshua Tete, in interviews, has shared that the Center aims to deliver excellent diagnostic care and treatment in combination with high efficiency and competitive pricing. He's quoted as saying, Quality of care is guaranteed with the availability of experienced Ghanaian and international medical staff from well-endowed international institutions. SGMC has come in time to help solve the region's need for private oncology services. On health from this day live, West African countries have outlined strategies to combat the sweep of the deadly Ebola virus. A two-day meeting in the capital of Ghana, Accra, saw the parties involved resolve to provide better surveillance to detect the cases of the virus, to enhance cross-border collaboration, to engage better with local communities, and to cooperate more closely with the UN, the World Health Organization, and other partners. A suggestion to close borders was rejected, with Liberian Deputy Health Minister Bernie Stan quoted as saying, there is no plan to close borders in a bid to prevent the spread of the disease, but instead, efforts at the border to educate people about risks should be stepped up. We believe that closing borders is not an option because we believe it would not work. Before we wrap up the news, guys, we'd like you to share your thoughts. How do you think governments and health organizations can work together with citizens to slow down the spread of the Ebola virus? Send your answers to our Facebook page or tweet at us using the hashtag SayIt.